At peak times, like Christmas, over 30,000 shoppers a day come into a city centre Marks and Spencer store like this. Serving them, looking after them, nearly 300 sales staff, over half of them part-time. Even now, at a more normal time of the year, this store has over a hundred sales staff on duty. To compete in the high streets of today, cost-effective use must be made of that staff. The most, as well as the best, got out of them. That's the job of the staff management team. At this store, June Lilly is part of that team, providing not just effective use of manpower, but the other better-known aspects of personnel, training, welfare and, of course, recruitment. Recruitment doesn't just mean finding the friendly faces for the store, but finding staff who work behind the scenes at two nearby outside warehouses. This one, a mile away, services the requirements of five Marks and Spencer stores in the area, and it's here that there's a vacancy. It's for a stock handler. It's temporary seasonal, that's four months, it's based here, and it's full time. What the stock handler actually is responsible for is that you can either, well, temporary seasonal, you're basically pushing away stock. Now, what happens, stock is booked in in the morning by full-time stock handlers on what we call advice notes, and you're responsible for seeing that the stock that you have been told that you've got actually balances with your advice sheets, and that is a two-way process. That involves probably about two hours of your day when the stock has been booked in and checked off, you then are responsible for putting it away in detailed order. And that's essential because it relates to money value and it leads to efficient booking out and, and checking list order. Various stores, say York or Dewsbury, will send in um, an order through the facsimile machine. The stock handler then picks up from the facsimile machine this order and goes through the bins. And because we've got the bins in order, we can easily decide where things are. And then we make our selection and we book it out and it goes to those areas over there and it's ready then to go out. So it's, it's quite a quick cycle, quite a quick turnaround. The person has got to be um, quite interested in doing administration. Um, because, like I say, you spent two hours of your day being involved in that and you've got to be very accurate because a mistake costs money. If you underbook something, we don't know whether we've got it and at the end of the day that is causing what we call shrinkage. You've also got to be very careful how you handle the stock um, when you're putting it away because it can be easily damaged and again, if you're not going to be very careful about things, that can cause shrinkage. Um, so you've got to be very clear in your own mind and, and be quite an organised person really, although obviously we do train people. And you've also got to think, you've got to be fair to them because it's quite physical work. So anybody who's got a history of back problems or anything like that or um, is slightly older may find it quite difficult. Um, so you would probably tend to go, if you've got the choice of getting the right person for somebody, probably a little bit younger. I, I personally would, because at the end of the day I feel that you possibly will get more out of them. It, it's the best person for the job, and the best person could be either female or it could be either male. Um, they've got to have, you know, the right criteria. A city centre store can receive up to 20 letters a day written on spec applying for jobs. These are passed to job centres who pre-screen applicants when vacancies occur. Occasionally, to fill a one-off vacancy quickly, a staff manager may pick up that week's crop of letters to select some for interview. You look at them and the first thing that catches your eye is sort of, is it, is it nicely presented? Has that person taken time to, to write sort of in a legible fashion and actually taken time to think about what they're writing? So it's, it's the first look. And then when you've looked at a letter and you've perhaps established that that person has taken time, you then break it down and you see um, what kind of background they've got, if they've, if they've taken time to put that in, or have they got any relative experience, or do you just generally think from the letter that that person would be worth giving an interview to? 
it's nice actually when you get a letter in if somebody takes the time out to write a CV um, again you don't want it too detailed because of the time element but if it's, it says enough about them and that's better because you've got an introductory letter then you've got a CV telling you about the details which is obviously very useful very often if people haven't taken the time to, to take care on the presentation of a letter we, we don't know that, we don't know what the person's like. The only thing we know about that person is this letter in front of us. So if we get something that's untidy, that's not been taken care, then we'll just tend to re regret it. Now, that's not really our fault, that is that person's fault, because they've not taken the time out. I mean, this person has not even taken care to write that way down. They've, they've written the letter the other way up. And as you can see, just by looking at it, they've got a torn off bit of paper off a full scrap sheet. And generally, the presentation is dreadful. Before I'd even read that letter, the first thing that I notice is this guy has used a piece of full scap. All right, he's got the address there, and he's got that on, so that's reasonably presented. But he's just pulled it out of his file. And, and again, it, it doesn't really look that right. It's not very professional. You'd think this person would probably take the time out to get a decent piece of notepaper and put that, say, on something like that, and that would look so much better, and your first impressions are going to be so much better. And then you'd pick it up and you'd read it, and you would probably have a different impression of this person. See, there's um, other ones that I've picked out for interview, and I'm going to invite in. And I'll explain very briefly why. It's quite nicely presented, this letter. And this person's had previous experience. The letter's quite good. The CV's quite interesting. Ian is 25, unemployed since leaving the army a year ago, where he worked in stores. This is a lovely letter. It's done in ink. It's, it's nicely presented. And it's very eye-appealing in the beginning. And again, good CV had experience. Sue is 27 and married. Eight previous jobs not mentioned in her letter, presently typing part-time. This letter, very neat, format's good, obviously taken time, no experience, but again, like I say, the letter's quite good. Dave is 19. He's done a YTS course that led nowhere, presently unemployed. This one here, um, is not as good as the previous ones um, because of the format. Again, use full scrap paper. Um, and it really is, is a borderline case, and only because we've perhaps not had as many applications I would have hoped that I'm bringing this person in for an interview. Otherwise, I would have regretted it. Gary is 25. Brief time in the services, several jobs since. Presently unemployed. This person here, again, Nice letter, good format, taken time out to present it, no experience, but we'll bring her in, um, could be what we're looking for, and again, it's a good letter. Anne is 23 and a single parent, hasn't worked for four years, previously in secretarial work. This one's super. I mean, the writing is not quite as good as the rest, but he's, he's taken the time out and he's presented it in a nice way. It's quite brief, it's readable, very good letter, really, and the experience on the back with a CV. The CV is very interesting. Jimmy is 23. His previous warehouse jobs were part-time, presently doing agency contract work. So will it be one of these six? Oh, I would hope so from that, from, from these letters here, um, because most of them are, are quite good letters. I'm just hoping really that the, the person who's written the letter matches with it. Well, I view interviewing as an essential part, really, of staff management, um, because what you're really doing, you're taking somebody on who's going to be the future of Marks & Spencer, hopefully, even if you just set them on in a four-month contract or a three-month contract. Um, we'll carry on interviewing until we do get the right person. It doesn't matter how long it takes. We've, we've got to get that person. And we could say, right, we'll take that person because we don't want to do another day. 
um, and by that you, you're letting your standards drop. So you've got a responsibility to Marks and Spencer to make sure that you get the right person. They come in, we sit them down in the lounge and we give them an application form. And we say, right, you've got 15 minutes to fill this application form in. It shouldn't take any longer than that. The first thing I did was make sure I could get to the interview on time by checking the buses because I was going by public transport. I then did dummy run yesterday to make sure I could get here on time, how far it was from the bus stop to the actual place and what happened when I come here. I, I haven't been for many interviews because I really know what I want. I don't see the point of going for an interview unless you know what you want and you can go and do that. This is the job that I want uh, and I'm going to go for it. No, I don't enjoy interviews actually. Not really. Quite nerve-wracking things to go through. But uh, once you actually get in the room, it's not so bad and you start talking. Yes, I am conscious that uh, you know, there, there is other people going for the interview as well. That's what you've got to overcome when you get, actually get into the interview itself. Yeah, I'm always getting asked like that. Once went for a job interview, got there, he said, you sound tall and I'm fun. I thought, oh, yeah, thanks. I've had a lot, a lot that's asked me if I'm willing to wear gloves and have my earrings taken out. And when I've said no, they said, oh, you can't have the job. This one's no more complicated than the majority of forms that are filled in anyway. But I tend to think they're, they're asking questions that aren't really relevant, I should think. Basically, because they put, they're asking for so much information and half the information they're asking for, you tend to forget anyway. I haven't really, what you call, prepared. I just sort of prepared myself and my nerves and trying to keep me out, <laughs> keep cool about it. Because I always get a bit uh, nervous when I go interviews or anything like that. I, what I tried to do was find out a bit about Marks and Spencers and um, look at the, how they run the shops and things. And um, I think, you know, they like it when you can say, oh, well, um, I've looked and I've and been to your uh, shop and I, I like this about it. And so I think they like that if you know something about the place. Actually, I rang Marks and Spencers itself. <laughs> and I asked them a bit about the company, so far from where they were, and generally just facts and information that would be useful to me in the interview. Yes, I'm very aware that I'm competing, yes, with other people. Um, on the day, I just try to do my best and keep everything in my head and keep my cool and calm and just help it go smoothly. And then when they finish filling their application form in, a supervisor would come and pick them up and take them round um, the warehouse on a quick tour, just telling them briefly what the job's about, and it gives them a chance to ask questions, you know, that way around. Which should we get the most of? Box, because we hold more box. Right. More, more money value is in the hanging. Or they go through to the bins, which are kept in numerical order, and we store from the lowest number to the highest number as we work through. Have you done any warehouse work? I have done some warehouse work. We need to, you know, as we change around, it's a seasonal thing. These numbers on their sheets, so you just look up the number and That's go through right, the yes. The bins actually work. And they tend to be that bit more relaxed um, on a five-minute tour around somewhere, rather than, say, in a one-to-one -one situation over a desk. And a supervisor um, may see a different sight to them from what I see. Yeah. There certainly doesn't seem to be anything too heavy anyway. No, <laughs> no, we have actually a small forklift for anything that was really uh -huh. excessively heavy. The hanging stock, which we do down there, mm -hmm. to Is all this equipment computerised? Is it all? At the end of the interview, what we'd do, we'd have a chat about it. I get her opinion, see if the person's made use of it, ask any questions. Whether they've gotten on to the idea, that's what we're doing. Does it take a long time to learn all these numbers? No, not really. It's surprising you pick them up because mm. everybody has their own section, basically. Yeah. So it's very easy. You start with the lowest number there. Yeah. Mm. Have you worked at warehouses? Yes, I've done three years in warehouses. Oh, house. well, you'd be very similar. Mm. Uh, this is a manual at the moment. I think I'd enjoy it. If I got a job, I'd enjoy it here. Uh, there's job security as well. Um, there's quite a few young people here, so I, I'd mix it quite happily. I'm quite looking forward to it. I think it's quite good. They seem to be quite organised here, so I quite like it as a job. It was interesting. I'm interested in the job now, especially for what I've seen in here. It's nice and quiet, just the way I like it. It, it seems really efficient and organised and um, easy to pick up the system. 
Yes, it was very helpful. I've seen a different side of warehousing than I'm used to. I'm used to working in dirty, unprofessional places, whereas on this occasion it's very professional, very clean, and very tight. It's, it's really good. Well, it's very difficult, really, for me to assess what a Marks & Spencer person is because we've got so many different individuals working and they've all got different facets to the personality. But I suppose, in brief, what we're looking for, a basic criteria would be they've got that sparkle, they've got personality. Um, they've got a little bit of bounce to them, you know. They're not sort of dull and uninteresting. Um, and they're not selfish, either. They're going to work as a team and work with their colleagues and hopefully sort of make it a happy environment to work in. Um, obviously they've got to be, have a fair degree of intelligence because there's some administration work and they've got to have a responsible attitude towards what they do, um, which you can often detect from interview, that does come across. And whether they're going to be reliable, that's an essential part. Whether they're going to be able to do extra hours, whether they're going to be obliging. Um, and they're not going to cause any problems, they're not going to cause any waves. We want them to fit into um, the framework which we've set. A marksman a person is just an ordinary person like me and you who is committed to a job and the company is committed to employing them. It's a happy, isn't it? A happy sort of person who feels secure in the job. Um, a marksman and Spencer person. Uh, I don't know, I've never really thought about it actually. Whenever I walk through a shop, I look like it does come out of a shop window. You know, perfectly dressed, not an air out of place. Never had muck under the nails. I should have thought someone who was really helpful and a uh, nice personality and um, willing to work hard and look after people if they, they come in and like they do in the shops, they're always really nice to you and helpful. I suppose that's what we want all the way through, not just on the, in the shop, but also in warehouse here. I think a Mark Spencer person is somebody with a nice personality, a willing and hard worker who's committed to the work and would stay with the company for an awful lot of years. When you do each interview, at the end of that interview you say, is that person right for Marks and Spencer? Will they fit into Marks and Spencer? And after that, you say, can they do the job? Um, and all the time, you should be very conscious that that person that you've recruited, that you've spent time with, and what the supervisor is going to spend time training, is not going to be in vain. Is it, like I say, is going to be the right person. At the end of the day, you're going to get some results. Right, looking through your application form, you're not actually in work at the moment. That's right, I've been in a place, I came out of the army. Right, and you came out of the army when? October 85, last Christmas. Right, and you've put your reasons for coming out. You wanted to start a family. Oh, right, so you're, you're obviously married. Yes. Right. My first post I had was London, which was Hendon. Right. Uh, where I did movements and stock control. Well, the, the week was split up into three, right? Three days I'd work movements, two days I'd work store. Mm. The movements involved at a military airport was getting passengers from A to B, like from Luton Airport to Guttersloe or Gatwick Airport to Gibraltar. The second part was in the stores, actually handling all the stores, putting it all on computer, dispatch and deliveries. So you've got computer experience? Yes. From Hendon, then where did you go then? You went to Gibraltar where I worked on a supply ship for about six months. And what did that involve? <laughs> Great. Right. All we'd done on that ship was, it, it had rations and weapons. Yes. So I kept all the, all the rations, I ordered all the stuff as well, and all the weapons went through me on a stock. So that, that, that was quite easy. Right. Did that involve you, say, following a particular system? Yes. Right. right. Did you have training to do that? Yeah. Well, I had, what, about three weeks training. I went back then to Stratford upon Avon, uh -huh. which is an ordnance depot. That was again, that was transport. Uh, I was working there in the store, so that's quite a big store. I had four people under me there. Uh, my basic thing was to motivate them people mm -hmm. and make sure that store run as smoothly as possible. Which was difficult, there was no computers involved, so it was completely manual there. Mm -hmm. uh, but the main thing, like your store, it was colour coded. 
so it was quite easy because it's separate thing black blue green in all separate sections so that was quite good I enjoyed mm -hmm. that was like that's very good did you enjoy that degree of responsibility that yes. you had yes right. uh, it it motivates me uh, I find the more I, I know, the more knowledge I can gather, the more I get motivated. And in turn, I can motivate other people. Right. So besides those places that you've mentioned, where else have you been then um, within the army? Have you been anywhere what you would term as exciting? Uh, not really, no. No? no. no? Did you have any particular experience with the Falklands or anything like that? Good. Oh, right. You don't want to answer no, those questions? I don't want to discuss them. Right. You can't discuss them? I don't want to. Oh, right, I see. Is that for a particular personal reason? Yes, that's, sorry about that. that's just personal reasons. Right. Well, just very briefly tell me, how long were you in the Falklands? Just so I can just fill in your, um, your history. About three weeks. Right, OK, that's very So, you worked there for two years? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Did you enjoy the work or...? Yes, it was quite enjoyable. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Right, but you've put your reasons... Well, no prospects because there weren't any any scope for uh, for promotion. Right, and then you went to what? To the art shop. Yeah. Right. How long did you stay there? Six months. A again, because because of no prospects, because that was the same as ma nearly the same as the uh, the bookshop itself. Right. Then what we oh purchase ledger clerk. Now that's quite different. Did you have any training for that? I went into training, yeah, they taught me how to um, do the books and invoicing and everything. Mm. And you've put there that you left for ill health. Yeah. Can you enlarge on, on that? Well, actually, I had a breakdown on there right. when I was at that job. Right. But I've fully recovered now since then. Okay. Okay. How long were you off work for as a result of that? Um, I was out of work for a year and a half, I think. How long did you work there for? Six months? Oh, about six months, yeah. Right. Was that the same reason as you left your other job for? Yes, it was, yeah. Right. OK, that's fine. Now then, you've done a painting and decorating course. Was that on the YTS scheme? Uh, yeah. Right, but you haven't put the dates in. Can you tell me when you did that? Uh, uh, just after I left school in 1981, I think. So when did you leave school? In 1981. Right, so you left school in 1981. Was that, did you take your exams? No. You didn't, so did you leave in the Easter? In the Easter of Right. And when did you start this painting and decorating course? Uh, the end of Easter, 81. I'd only just left school, started right. straight away. So Easter 81. Was it a year? Yep. So it finished 82. Mm. Right. Did you enjoy that? Uh, very much. I enjoyed the working. That was the wet, uh, starting mostly. Right. So why haven't you gone into that? Uh, I never tried afterwards. Well, wh why didn't you try? Well, basically after warehouse work, doing shelves, but it all meant doing painting and decorating. Right. So have you had any experience in warehouse work? Uh, while I was doing that course, I worked mainly in the uh, stockroom, doing the shelves and seeing what supplies were coming in and out. Oh, right, OK. Right. So between Easter 83 and now, which we're talking about three years, three years. Years. how have you kept yourself busy? What have you been doing? Well, I've been down the centre, Apex Trust, just helping out voluntary work down there. Right, and what have you been doing then on the voluntary side? Oh, so it's plastering, same again, stock work. Mm. Mm. Have you tried for some employment? Well, I've tried numerous things that they've put me onto. Right. Never seen me get interviews. Well, I went from there into the Air Force. Right. That's quite a disciplined environment, isn't it? It was a disciplined environment, and I thought it was just what I needed to bring me around a bit. And it's the sort of thing that I would have liked to do anyway. Right. Did you do that enough, off so. your own bat? Did you decide you wanted to go into the Air Force for your own good, or did you? were you advised by somebody? Well, my parents did have a little bit of influence there at the time. They thought it might have done me some good as well. And mm. I, after a while, I tended to agree with them. I thought it would, you know, change me in one way or another. Right. So I went in and, and with the idea that I was going to get through the training, which I did eventually. Mm -hmm. But uh, after five or six months, I decided to leave. I couldn't cope with the 
pressures of it at the time, for one reason or another. When did you do it? After a while, the discipline got a little bit too much, and mm. I couldn't keep up with it at the time, so I just decided to leave. Right. Leaving that on one side, what did you do then after that? Because that presumably would say it was about October 1977, was that right? And, well, you won't believe this or not, I did go into the army when, in March 1978. From sort of 78, um, the next time I've got written down for employment was 82. What mm -hmm. did you do between 78 and 82? Unemployed. Right. Unemployed. How did you keep yourself motivated? Well, I have a lot of hobbies and interests. Oh, such as what? Well, um, a bit of a UFOlogist, the study of UFOs, flying saucers, that sort of stuff. Oh, I'm and glad you explained that to me. Right. And <laughs> but a lot of people don't seem to understand what it is. No, well, so, I can understand that, because it's quite an unusual hobby, isn't it? It's, a, it's an unusual hobby, but I suppose I was an unusual person at the time. And I've since, since the interest in that has since died off, but at the time I was very keen. Mm. And I got pretty far in the research aspect. All oh, right, you, you tell me a little bit about that, because I'm quite interested in things like that. Well, after about five months after I started getting to well, the initial five months was pretty difficult, but after that I became what's known as a... Um, an investigative coordinator for uh, North Yorkshire. And I undertook the responsibility of taking on all the cases that were reported. Mm -hmm. came through me initially, and I designated those reports to various... Let us go back to um, the news <coughs> agents. You were an assistant manager there. Mm -hmm. um, what did that really involve? It involved a lot of things, actually, but general sort of stuff. That, uh, I took over the responsibility of the shop. When the manager was absent, I took over the entire responsibility of stock control, selling in the shops, the newspaper deliveries and all the rest of it, and banking and et cetera, et cetera. Right. All that general sort of stuff. I found that most interesting, actually. Right. Is that the only experience that you've really had then of dealing, say, with stock? And no, no. I've had a few jobs in the past where I've dealt with stock. I worked for a company called Red as well. Right. How long did you do back. that for? Because it's not down here in the application form. Well, I only lasted there for about five months, as a matter of fact, because uh, I didn't get on too well with the manager at the time. Right. So I left. Okay. And then you were employed in September 1980? No, July 1979. Ah, right, you put September 80. So July 79. Well, I started with my first one. I put my, um, my second oh, one. Oh, right, my, my, my apologies, yeah. my apologies, I'm misreading it. Yeah. So how did you get that job then? What did you do? Well, I went through the job centre. I just went down to Bradford and there was one in the uh, window. Because right. I'd, I'd taken uh, typing at school, mm -hmm. so really that's all I could go into was secretarial work. So, And I thought, oh, I'll try it out and see how it is. Right. I didn't really like secretarial work and um, really when I got pregnant, that I was quite pleased really to, uh, to leave because I wasn't... Uh, I wasn't enjoying it. Mm. What didn't you enjoy about it? Um, sitting all day at a typewriter and typing away, I wanted a bit more variety mm. in a job. Mm. Well, you left in November 1982, presumably that was to have your baby. Yeah. Have, have you worked since? No, I haven't. No. no. Um, is that because you've been looking after your child? Yeah. Right. Um, I, I just feel that during its years before school, don't really want someone else looking after it, yeah. and uh, was, I wasn't willing to go back, and I was just scared leaving it. Really, mm. what have you got, girl or a boy? A boy. Oh, lovely. What do you call him? David. Right. So, since you've not been working, mm -hmm. have you, have you supported David? Uh, well, social security and the uh, benefits. Well, I was for the first uh, year I was with my husband, mm. but then uh, things started going wrong. So I left and went to live with my parents, and they've been really, really helpful. Mm -hmm. And that's why I've gone to look for a job now, because they said that they'd look after the baby while I was at work. Because yeah, my mum's just retired, so she'll be there all the time to look after him. And you went on to do? A uh, two-year YTS with Asda Crossgate. Oh, right. What did you think about Asda? It was very good. Um, it was a bit disoriented, everything was mad Harry and I'd never worked before, so yeah. it took some getting used to it. But after about two or three weeks and I began to get to know people and 
it was a different side of life working with adults and so forth. And I just seemed to fit in that. Yeah, it's a quite a transition life. period, isn't it, between oh, school and work? It's a very big shock from mm. being friends at school and messing about with the football and then going mm. to work and, oh, it's a totally mm. different world. Yeah, because suddenly you've got a hierarchy, haven't you, to, yeah. mm. to fit into. And you did that for two years? Yes. Why didn't you continue working for ASDA? It was only a training course. Oh, right. The training house. It was the pilot scheme for youth training schemes. My duties, I can give you a rough example of one of the last jobs I've just completed. Um, it's forms just like this. At your right. I've done a rough write down. It's a bit rough. Um, you have your product card, item right. card. You'll then look down your section and say you want a P23 form. You'll go down your section, which you should roughly know after a while. You'll grab the item that you want, mm -hmm. running fast, <laughs> get to your bench. Is it that pressurised? Oh, it's very fast, it. hard-working company. Yeah. Get your bottle, put it in the box, package it, tape it, make sure it's the right bottle, of course. Yeah. Label it, put it onto a trolley. So, so far you've done everything from the minutes come out. Wheel it down in a cage, put it on its specific section to go out on the vans. There was myself and three other lads. Right. Now, they'd work alternate times. Yeah. With it being part time, sometimes we're available, sometimes we want they might need them for another department. Right. But we cut quite well, but there was three. And there wasn't as quite as fast thinking as I was, because I worked better under pressure myself. And, you know, it was sort of, well, it's over there. And they suddenly just sort of come to me naturally, you know. Did you organise them then? Were you responsible for organising well, them? I had to do if things were going to go out on time. But you had to do it very discreetly, otherwise you'd be undermining the other person, that's to say. The majority of people I've spoken to, uh, you're a good employee and you're a secure employer, which is important to me. Uh, when I apply for a job, I throw all myself into it. I give the army 100% and nothing else. The most important thing is to me that I, I want a job where I can make a career out of. Uh -huh. uh, I've already had one career. I'm not used to slipping around from job to job. I want a career. And Marks and Spencers, from what I know, I can, could offer me a career. They could also, I think, if I got the job and I progressed, they'd let me progress within the company. They also, for what I noticed when I came in, you have a lot of good incentive schemes to motivate people, which again, I enjoy that sort of thing. Right. Are those your reasons then for applying to Marks and Spencer? Yeah. A career prospect and to be able to get on and progress within the company, that's what I'd like. Right. On your tour around, did you talk to the super about, supervisor about progression? Yes. You did. Yeah. What did she say to you? Uh, her exact was, if you are willing to give your best and the company will give as much as it can. Mm. But if you don't give, then the company can't give, which mm. is just thoroughly what we agree with. Now then, why are you particularly interested in Marks & Spencer? Because I think they've got a lot to offer. What makes you say that? Well, they, they look after the, their employees well, good conditions yeah. and that sort of thing. Right. Do you know anything about the job that that we might offer you? Well, I have been shown around the warehouse by Sue, so mm. the supervisor, mm. and she's put enlightened me on a few points. What were your impressions? I was very impressed with it. Mm. Yeah, the organisation of it all, and all the paperwork is done efficiently. Right. Did you feel that you would be able to fit into a Marks and Spencer environment? I think From so. What yeah. You've very briefly seen. From what I've seen so far, I think I would. Yeah. Right. Easily. So, why have you applied then to Marks and Spencer? What do you think you can give Marks and Spencer? Uh, well, I think I'm pretty good uh, working on shelves, doing stock work. Uh, I think Marks and Spencer's is suitable to. It won't be a 12 months course, it won't be slung back on the door after so long. Well, you do realise it's temporary seasonal, don't you? Be mm. it full time. Yeah, but if I work hard enough, I could uh, keep coming back. And. Plus, it'll give me time on a night to go at night school to do courses. Right. Will you be flexible if you come to us? Yeah. You don't mind doing seven o'clock starts in the morning? No, I can work any time. Right. Then why are you particularly interested in Marks and Spencer? Well, I've had a few people that have told me in the past that it's a fairly good company to work for. It's fairly reliable, there's no redundancies, not to my knowledge. You've had a quick tour around mm -hmm. um, of the warehouse. 
be it brief, what were your impressions of Marks and Spencer? I found it quite interesting. The thing, the thing I found most interesting is that all the stock that they have in the warehouse is actually manually recorded. And I thought it, with a company this size, it'd be computerised. Mm. That's the thing that, you know, I was rather apprehensive about because I didn't particularly want to keen on the idea of the manual records because it involves a hell of a lot of paperwork. With, of course, with computerised records, it's a lot less work to do. Do you mind hard work? No, not at all. Not at all. Don't mind how it right. Never killed anybody. Why have you applied to Marks and Spencer? Uh, well, I've got a friend who works in Bradford. She works in the, on the shop, in that little shop where the customers come in. And she right. said it was a really good place to work for and that's been really looked after. Um, and I thought that I'd really want to work here. Because she said that um, they don't just, they're not just nice people, just for the customers, they're really nice all the way through. Mm. Cause, and so I thought <laughs> I'd like to uh, work for Marks and Spencers. Well, obviously the store's quite different, really, isn't it, from yeah. the warehouse. So do you know anything about the warehouse? Only really from what um, I was shown this morning. Mm. What were your impressions? Very efficient and organised. I thought it was going to be um, a lot, I don't know, grim and but it seemed really organised and really easy to pick up the system when she was explaining. I was just going to ask you, um, how did you come to that conclusion? Because I had a very brief tour around, didn't you? Yeah, well, I, I asked her, I said, oh, crikey, you know, it looks hard. Uh, but she said, oh, no, it, it shouldn't be too long before you've picked it up, because everything's coded. Yeah. And um, you put down your code on your piece of paper when you've got your order. Yeah. So I should be able to pick that up really easily. And from your very brief tour, do you think you're sort of able to fit in with the Marks and Spencer sort of style? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Why have you applied to Marks and Spencer? Well, I think it's a very good company. has a lot to offer, and hopefully I have a lot to offer Marks and Spencers. Um, I consider myself very committed. It's the first full-time employer I get, hopefully. Um, very enthusiastic. would like to go a lot further within retail warehousing or retail, whether it be Max and Spencer's stores or whether it be one of their warehouses, right. and hopefully progress throughout the company and stay with it. Right, if you've got your own ideas, how do you react to people telling you what to do if you don't like what you've been told? I think whether it's a person in a higher position than you or a lower, I think everybody's entitled, you know, to voice their opinions if it is in the right context, you know, as to say there in a position to say because they feel this or that or make a suggestion. That's no problem. Um, I'm now working under other people. But at first, I found it a bit of a problem. I thought, why well, I used to do this, you know, sort of thing, because I got used to controlling people. And all of a sudden, it was a case of, you're not paid to think, you're just paid to don't say, do it. But contrasted eventually and got to know the people, and it works quite well now. It's not a case of telling you what to do because you use your own initiative and get on with it. Mm. Do you work better if you're given a degree of responsibility? Yes. I find that myself. If I'm stood around being told what to do, it's very dead-endish. Yeah. I prefer to be able to use my own initiative and think, well, I can improve that, I'll make this better by doing this or doing that. Mm. Or I'll do this now because I'm not doing it at the moment, so it'll be there for me later. Quicker to get older than get out. And what about uniform? I saw a uniform on there. Is that given free or do I have to yes. purchase it or something? No, no, we give it you free, but obviously we expect you to look after it just like you would your own clothes because they are expensive. Um, so that, you know, we stipulate that to you and we give you one. Right, and what about shoes? We have to wear protective shoes or some kind? Right. We expect you to wear sensible shoes because of the Health and Safety at Work Act. Uh, yeah. All right? Yeah. Anything else that you'd like to ask? Yeah, what's the, what's the wages? Right, well, if you're yeah, well, on the walk round, I inquired about the stores that you do. Can you be put onto a certain store, or do you just get put onto it by somebody else? So what with do you mean? the can, do you get? Can you request to work for a particular unit? You mean yeah, like the Leeds one or the York one. Um, no, we put you where. Well, there's nothing that, that, that I can think of at mine, but I suppose if I if I if I, if I, if I do when I do start, if then. Um, 
I probably will have a few questions by then. I can't think of anything at hand. I've seen all the stock and all the rest, I know what's more or less involved, and I'm pretty satisfied with that. Yeah, um, it's a temporary job, but is there any hope that it might be permanent? Yes, there is. Um, but we say to everybody, really, the ball is very much in your court. Yeah. Um, if you work very hard, um, then we're not going to want to lose you, especially mm -hmm. when we've invested time and money. Yeah. And we, you know, we've obviously spent a fair bit of time training you. Um, mm. If you come up to scratch, and if we've got a vacancy, mm. then we'd obviously look to keeping you on. But it is very. Um, what sort of bonus and incentive do you offer, scheme-wise? Right. Well, when you're temporary seasonal, um, unless you're sort of working a certain period before Christmas. You don't get, obviously, as much bonus as yeah. permanent staff. I've put here, I, I thought he was very personable. His appearance was good. Um, communication was good. Interesting job. Yes, he had it. Um, I thought his potential to get on with other staff was probably all right. Um, the only thing that I did doubt, he'd obviously been a leader, and I don't know how it fit in being on the same level as everybody else, that's one thing that I would definitely question. Did you enjoy that degree of responsibility that yes. you had? Yes. Uh, it, it motivates me. Uh, I find the more I, I know, the more knowledge I can gather, the more I get motivated. And in turn, I can motivate other people. He would need some controlling and some firm handling. Because to me, he came over particularly strong and, and quite confident. And I don't know how he would take to taking orders, say, from a supervisor. And I could probably foresee that we may have some handling problems with him in the future. But that is quite a subjective comment, but that certainly came out to me during the interview. I thought it went pretty well, actually. There was only one question <laughs> which I thought worried me, and that was a Falklands one, which I, I really wasn't prepared for, because since the actual Falklands conflict, I've, I've never really discussed that. Cut. Oh, right. You don't want to answer no, those questions? No, I don't discuss them. Right, you can't discuss them? I don't want to. Oh, right, I see. Is that for a particular personal reason? Yes, that's, sorry about that, that's just personal reasons. Right. Well, just by, by stating what he did and almost overreacting, it, it sets doubts off in your mind. You think, oh goodness, that must be quite serious, you know, what, what happened? I would have respected him much more if he'd said an honest answer, um, or what had seemed to be an honest answer. Obviously, it would have been checked out by references. Um, but the way that he reacted to the situation, I, he didn't do himself any justice whatsoever. I know a lot of people who have died in that. And she threw me. <laughs> yeah. I reckon that that might have uh, spoiled you. I, I hope not. Uh, but it does worry me slightly, yes. Because I was very hesitant now. I wouldn't talk about it. It was personal to me. So what I'd possibly do with him would be follow up references, see what they came out like, and I would sort of use him as a reserve, only if I didn't get a superstar. Um, I would possibly have a few misgivings if I didn't set him on. There would be doubts at the back of my mind. I, I felt very much during that interview that I had to work particularly hard to get anything from this girl. I mean, these seven, eight jobs that she's done, I, I really did try to probe them. And she just didn't seem to, to get what I was trying to get at. I mean, why she left. And we skipped from one to the other. I didn't really get a proper explanation. Because of no prospects, because that was the same as, nearly the same as the, uh, the bookshop itself. And I would question whether she's really applied herself and given what she can to her job. Because I think often it's a case of if you put something in, you're going to get a lot more out. And she just struck me, again, as being a girl who had just completely lost her way, didn't, didn't know what she wanted to do. And again, I would question her reasons, really, for wanting to join Marks and Spencer. Well, actually, I had a breakdown on there right. when I was at that job. Right. But I've fully recovered now since then. Okay. Maybe she's over it, but if she comes here at Christmas, you work under a lot of pressure. And what my concern would be, apart from obviously for her, that if things didn't go well for her here and she couldn't take the pressure, then it would be too late for me to take somebody else on, and that's going to leave an awful lot of pressure on my staff who are left, which at the end of the day isn't fair, so I've got to think about them as well. Well, I believe in telling the truth. That's one thing. 
And there's no point hiding the fact because it probably would come out in the wash anyway. I don't know, I've, I've got so many doubts. I've regretted this one because of it. <laughs> um, I'm a little bit confident, yeah. I feel as if I've done very well in the interview. It's, in some ways, it's, it's quite likeable. But that's where it stops. Um, what, I mean, what a history. Um, you look at his application form and it just does not ring true at all. Um, I've put here, employment history probe, unsatisfactory, rather pottered. Um, and I would raise a question mark definitely over what he told me about the army and the RAF. Um, well, you won't believe this or not, I did go into the army when, in March 1978. It just does not ring true that anybody can be in a disciplined environment that they obviously couldn't stand, and yet he goes and rejoins the army. Um, is either telling me a pack of lies there, or the guy's an idiot, one of the two. The more positive you are, the better, really, because he, the chances of getting the job are a lot better. Obviously, if you come clean with everything, just tell them the truth. In regards to your other jobs, you know, you're fine. And then, I mean, from March 78, I mean, what's he been doing? You know, you've got four years. And he couldn't, and when I probed that, Apart from going on at great length about his hobbies and flying saucers and everything, he told me nothing of any substance. And I think he thought that I'd forgotten really what I was asking. Yes. And the first um, idea that came up was he had been abducted by extraterrestrials. And I mean, I don't know anything about it, so he could have been telling me a load of rubbish, but at least he made it quite interesting and at least it was quite entertaining. Um, I mean, you've got to give him team points for that. But that's about all you do give him team points for, because he ain't worth anything else. And again, he's made no effort with his appearance whatsoever. He's scruffy, he's unshaven, didn't look like he'd washed his hair. Um, sleeves rolled up. And it's a shame, because in some ways he was quite personable. But his overall appearance and his employment history, which I would raise a very big question mark over for six years, is a definite regret without any question. I don't even have to think about it. But uh, I'm fairly hopeful now. I'm more hopeful than I was before I went in, put it that way. A lot more hopeful. It's a definite no, isn't it? I mean, quite frankly, it's just a joke. Um, I've put absolutely no way would we employ this person. Um, I mean, it's fine to express yourself in the way that you want to express yourself but you've got to be able to adapt to what I sort of term as the real world. And for starters, there's just no way the staff would accept him here. Hey, sad. This is all I know. It'd be like stepping into another world if I changed my appearance. And it'd be harder to cope with than not having a job. I think despite sort of his, his personal appearance, um, he had a very potted employment history. Um, if I remember rightly, from Easter 1983 till now, what's he been doing? I mean, that raised a great question mark in my mind, because when I pushed him, there was no substance to his answer whatsoever. I've been down the centre, Apex Trust, just helping out volunteer work down there. Um, I felt that he wasn't motivated, I felt that he just wasn't really interested, he had no real commitment. I mean, why is he applying for the job? He didn't really strike me that he even wanted it. I mean, was it sort of something to do to say that he's applying for jobs? No interest whatsoever. And from my point of view, a complete waste of time. Just an awkward question to answer. You know, how can you recall for three years of lost time? Which one? Three, two years. Apart from that, everything went... Well, I thought everything went OK. I thought she had the right image. Um, she looked the part, she had a nice manner, and from her own sort of personality, there's no reason that I shouldn't employ her. And actually, I would imagine that she would do quite well within Marks and Spencer. There seemed this willingness to learn and this willingness to adapt and to know what was going on, and she seemed very interested in the job. I mean, she picked up a few things on the tour round. You put down your code on your piece of paper when you've got your order, mm. so I should be able to pick that up really easily. She obviously didn't enjoy her previous jobs, but we can all make mistakes. Um, it takes a lot of guts, really, to get out of something. It's very easy to stay. 
I, I just feel that during its years before school, don't really want someone else looking after it. Yeah. And I admired her reasons for wanting to stay at home to look after her son. It can't have been easy for her. And I think that said a lot. Um, and I'm sure because she's got a son at home, she, I think she would be very committed actually to Marks and Spence. I'm sure she'd want to make it work. I thought she had the right approach to work. Although, I mean, she's not obviously had a job for 82, but like I said, I admired her reasons. Um, if anything, she lacked confidence, but I'm sure in the right environment we'd be able to big build that up again. And again, if she's not been sort of in circulations for a few years, then you can understand why. Bad, I don't think. Um, she was really nice, put you at your ease, and uh, made the job sound quite good. The only thing I'm worried about is whether it would become permanent, because you know, I'm really looking for a permanent job at the moment. I mean, she's, she's a favourite, really, up till now, simply because she had the right approach and she had this keenness which made up for the lack of experience that she didn't have. Because, I mean, we obviously do spend some time training them um, and I'm sure she could, like I say, do quite well. I liked him a lot, very much. Um, good manner. He was a bit nervous. But you've got to take that into account within an interview situation. If he's very keen to do the job and do himself justice, then, you know, people are going to be nervous. Um, I thought he had a nice personality. I thought he was bright. I thought he was positive. It, all in all, you know, was super. And what made it even more, more interesting was the fact that he had experience. And, you know, brought things along to show me. And the system that he'd used, although it not be exactly like Marks and Spencer, was very similar. I took a card. The description, what they could so far. He'd obviously given it some thought, and even be it quite irrelevant because we don't work the same system. He wanted to show me that he'd taken an interest, and this is what he was doing, and this was great. And his enthusiasm was, I mean, it was obvious for everybody to see, and that impressed me. The willingness to learn, and you know, to to pick things up. I thought that was super. I thought about it about three hours before the interview, and I thought. Well, other people are going to do something pretty good anyway in the interview, you know, trying to make themselves up front sort of thing. So I thought, well, I'll try this. And what I thought was interesting was when I challenged him about how he would react to sort of taking orders, I'm sure he would, um, and I'm sure he would come up with some positive suggestions if he, did, if he didn't agree with something. I think he'd possibly say, but I think he'd get on with it. He's, he's not a rebel as such. I think whether it's a person in a higher position than you, or a lower, I think everybody's entitled, you know, to voice their opinions if it is in the right context, you know, as to say they're in a position to say because they feel this or that or make a suggestion. That's no problem. Um, I'm now working under other people. But at first, I found it a bit of a problem. I thought, why well, I used to do this, you know, sort of thing, because I'd got used to controlling people. And all of a sudden it was a case of, you're not paid to think, you're just paid to don't say, do it. I'd pick him. I'd be quite confident in picking him. I've put actually on, um, on the um, summary, I think he could do quite well in Marks and Spencer. Um, if he works to the way that he came across an interview and actually got stuck down to it, I could possibly see him going on to further development. That's if, you know, if he applies himself as he sort of come across an interview. But definitely I would take him. I think he would be quite a safe bet. Where you pull all the same yeah. numbers and you see this in the same order. And also within Marks and Spencer it should be a universal mm -hmm. setup. It works through, you know, the thing. The Where candidates in this video were volunteers from the books of the Apex Trust Centre in Leeds. Yeah, yes, I think so. I think they're aiming towards Marks. We have the hanging bins. They received no special tuition and took part knowing there was no job on offer, that their efforts, good and bad, would be shown, and that June Lilly would be asked to comment frankly on their performances. Because each one runs in the same way. Whichever girl we, or stock handler were working within the building, you would go straight away, you would be able to go to any part of the building and pull the same stock. Is that the same way they they took part to improve their interview skills and felt it would do their job prospects no harm if they were able to impress Marks and Spencer. So far as the candidates were concerned, it was for real. The candidates have seen the finished video and have approved their contributions to it. We have two different deliveries. We have a hanging 
which is fashion uh, trans care. Yeah. And Max is that I think I'm starting to go into computers, but at the moment we're sort mm. of hanging back on the small. It's very good ones. for building up stock as well. Yes. As Following his performance in the interview, Marks and Spencer have subsequently invited Jimmy to apply for the next stock handler vacancy.